Nice to meet you. Hi, EJ. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Our honored guest is Sandeep, Na Sandeep Nath. I hope I pronounce your well correctly, this name. Absolutely. I, I have uh, the same kind of pronunciation as you read, not like you guys. Mm -hmm. And originally, I prepared many questions for you about your business, but uh, just now we agreed that we will overlap it a little bit for the Indian business and Indian culture. Uh, in which town are you currently now at this moment? So I am uh, from India, as uh, you just mentioned, and I stay in the capital, in uh, the city called Delhi, uh, not mm -hmm. far from the airport. So mm -hmm. you're most welcome to drop in as I have offered earlier also. <laughs> and I must ask you the first question, which I didn't prepare, to be honest. Uh, what is Delhi about? Is it different from other cities and other places, or is it uh, generally same, the culture in Delhi? Well, that's a very nice question because Delhi is uh, a city in the north of India. Uh, India is about 3,000 kilometers north to south. So we are at about uh, 800 to 1,000 kilometer mark. I'm not absolutely sure of that geographically. But we are just south of the Himalayas. So it tends to, it, and it's landlocked because a lot of India is in the ocean. And so it tends to get very hot when it's hot and Pretty cold when it's cold, but it does not go down below zero. Uh, right now, we are in the cold time. We're talking in December, very close to Christmas. And uh, we had fog all morning. So typically, the flights get late. And if you're in business and you want to do business with India, then you would be talking about Delhi and Bombay as two major cities. Bombay is now called Mumbai, which are commercial cities. Delhi is the seat of government, so you want anything to move in policy making, you've got to be in Delhi. Now, insofar as Delhi being different from other places, because of what I just told you, these two cities attract the largest number of people from all over the country. So both of them have populations in excess of 20 million and high floating populations as well. Uh, it is it is a center of uh, commerce. It's a center of government. It's also a center of uh, a lot of the cultural activity, because uh, purely because of the numbers. So we have a lot of uh, activities happening in the city. It's quite quite alive. A lot of jobs are available in cities like Mumbai and Delhi. But uh, for jobs, we have another ten cities in India which are um, up and coming and pretty uh, pretty well known internationally. Bangalore, for instance, is known for uh, its software and IT services. Chennai has been a stronghold of uh, manufacturing and trade. It's a port city as well, as also Kolkata. And Hyderabad, which is uh, up and coming. Pune is up and coming with uh, a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs to set up uh, and scale large businesses, especially in the uh, new age economies. So mm -hmm. these are the cities that would not be competing with Delhi, but would be becoming large monoliths, each in excess of 10 million people, of course, already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandeep. It's very interesting. I would like to welcome uh, our audience too. Thank you for listening to us. Today we will not talk about only about India and do doing business in India and Indian culture, but also about uh, renewing our energy. And uh, today with us is my dear friend and colleague uh, Sandeep Nath, who is the author of four international acclaimed book and books and international speaker. So tell me, just uh, before we continue talking about, uh, about uh, this subject, about your country, uh, how was your year business-wise, the past year, 2023? It's been an excellent year, thanks to divine energies playing all around us. We started this year with a lot of travel because it was what uh, eventually I started reading in the various social media. It's called revenge tourism after being locked down for three years or two years, whatever. Uh, 2023, we were also those revenge travelers. So we spent the first six months almost uh, all over Europe and Mexico. And um, we, we were doing workshops, uh, I was giving talks, and uh, it, it was very exciting all the way to June. Uh, it continues to be exciting, but we were back in Delhi in June, and 
from July onwards, in fact, from June itself, I've been writing my uh, fourth book, which is uh, uh, The Emptiness of Success. And this is about how success is valued in society differently from how it uh, really is. And uh, that's a completely different subject. Uh, you did not mention that in the, your preamble, so I'm not going to get into it. But I'd like people to know that it's coming out by about May, June, middle of uh, 2024. And it's going to be a very exciting read, especially if you are a millennial who's um, achieved something, uh, like you know, you, you feel that uh, you've got some place, then you're probably examining, is this where I want it to be? And if uh, you are just examining, where is it that people really want to be? What, what makes life fulfilling in the first place? then you're going to agree with a lot of concepts over here because there is there is a lot that i draw from uh, ancient oriental wisdom from india from uh, the tao from tibet and infuse it into our uh, life today in helping us analyze what really is success and what is this feeling of emptiness hollowness or whatever fulfillment happiness that we are all chasing so that's what's been happening the last few months. My publisher is quite happy with it. Currently, the book is under edit. And um, it's also been an exciting year because uh, moving away or rather ahead of the kind of work that I was doing one on one with people, uh, especially business owners and CEOs and uh, professionals on the coaching front on getting them to understand how to utilize their potential more. Now in 2024, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm starting up on masterminds, which are going to be cohorts, small cohorts, which are in complete confidentiality, where we promise the participants two things. One, that they will make at least three breakthroughs during the course of the year as they're part of this mastermind cohort. And two, that they're going to get a very, very good group of best buddies who have the same values, who have the same business standing, who have the same life approach, but come from completely diverse uh, backgrounds and industries and environments. So that cross-pollination of ideas, that juxtaposition of thinking is going to really help us uh, get each of the participants of the mastermind to make their breakthroughs. So mm -hmm. I'm uh, really bullish about that and really happy to have put together the structure for that. After various masterminds that I've done in various uh, groups earlier, this is one where I'm looking at a consistent uh, consistency of cohort every month in the country. Before I go to my next question, I would like to uh, say that uh, people who are only listening audio version now cannot see behind you the book, which is called Renewal. What does this word mean, renewal? What does it mean? How can I touch it? Okay, thank you. It's a very profound question. How can I touch it? I love that question. It is. It is so exactly where we are struggling today as a society we we want to get the human aspect because of technology because of the internet we we stop touching things <laughs> except buttons and it's so very very good so what we have to understand is that we are all at three levels of existence the body which touches things physically the mind which touches things emotionally and spirit, which touches at a feeling level. And when we have the body, mind, and spirit in alignment, then we are, we, we are at a place where we are healthy, we are happy, we are harmonious. Renewal is about bringing that into the self, and then that happens through habits. It is also about bringing that into our relationships, which is called symbiotic renewal, which changes the way we interplay with our teams, with our families, with people around us, with vendors, with associates, with clients. And we create health and happiness and harmony all around in our relationships. And it happens at the third level of renewal, which is the systemic renewal. And you know that's about the man-made systems. We've made them. And we found that because we've been so busy playing the system, we've forgotten that we can change the system. And AG, really, it took us a coronavirus to push us in the direction of changing systems, which we have just grown to accept. Like 
for example, uh, why couldn't we do telecommuting and bring down the pollution? One week of lockdown and a place like Delhi, which I was telling you initially, is very foggy today. It's always year round that the sky is gray. Today it was so foggy that you couldn't see the buildings in front, just uh, uh, 50 meters away. But even otherwise, because of pollution, you can't see buildings beyond 500 meters year round. But during the first week of lockdown, we started seeing buildings that were five kilometers away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why can't we do that by design? Why can't we do schooling in a in an online manner or in hybrid manner without the stress? These are systemic renewal activities which we don't need a coronavirus to push us to think about. We need habit change. We change our habits. And because we did it in two, three weeks instead of two, three years, we got very stressed. But now we are in that two, three year run up post pandemic. And this is where we can use renewal to redesign the way that we are working uh, both in educational institutions as well as in corporates. So how do mm -hmm. we touch renewal? Well, we read the book. It's a good thing to touch. You can get it on any leading uh, online portal and get a print copy from there. Or you can touch it mentally through your Kindle or through your... Uh, uh, you can download a PDF from renewalism.com. Mm -hmm. Absolutely free. Because the idea is Andy. to get the message mm -hmm. of consciousness across. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you very much. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's a long wow. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Please finish. Finish, and I will ask you later. No, I love the, the, the question that's coming up. That's the long and short of it. The how how you touch it both at body, mind, and spirit level. <laughs> Go on. So, if I understand well, you are planning a mastermind for business people. Please, if you are interested, uh, for people who are listening, write it down under this video. Sandy will be very happy to answer all your questions about the mastermind, about the book, which is called either Renewal or there I see another book, Arrive at Success. And uh, please write to Sandy all the questions. And uh, here I have another question uh, and I will adjust it uh, because you are talking about things interestingly. I will adjust the question for you personally. Is more important to uh, go internationally or do you want to stay in the Indian market? What is more important for you? Do you want to spread your business, your words to the to the world or do you want to concentrate on India? What is better for you? Well, the, it's not about what's better for me. It's not that it's a business. What's better for human consciousness? What's better for people to make a change and feel this, this happiness, health, and harmony within them? They're all over the world. These boundaries that we lay down are just man-made. They're systems which we've made, and then we get bound by them. No. Wherever mm -hmm. there is a person, a living, breathing human being, who can uh, fe feel that... the they, they can do more, they can be more, they can just opt in, like you said, put in a question and uh, have, have an answer from me. I, I'll be I'll be right there, I'll be reading those questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And participate in whichever way in the renewalism movement. It's not a business, it's a movement. It's a mm -hmm. movement to raise human consciousness and everybody all over the world is welcome to participate and take that further, empower people along, and that's how the movement grows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, can you recommend or help other people, other starting entrepreneurs, if you give some word of advice, how to go globally, how to think globally, what is your recommendation? So now, uh, the way I understand your question, Iji, is uh, if there is an entrepreneur uh, like I have always been. I've been an entrepreneur since 1992. Um, and they want to set their sites beyond Czechoslovakia or beyond Europe. Yes. Then yes. what is it exactly. that they would uh, need to keep in mind? Yeah. Yes. Is, is that? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So what I would say is from the top of my hat, I love this conversation because it's completely candid. We, we haven't talked about these questions before. And so I'm going to tell you stuff from my experience. One thing that is extremely important is to have uh, an openness 
that people can think differently. We are caught up by habits. Our habits tell us that this is how we think. So whatever we have to do to change that thinking has to happen by changing another habit that, yes, I will always question why I think this way. If that can happen, then all these newfangled labels that we have about diversity, inclusion, and <laughs> equity, and all that, all that goes out of the window because we are all very similar human beings. We just have different habits. And if we can see the perspective that there can be other habits, we can see people working, working ourselves working with people across the globe. Because we just have to understand how other people respond to because they perceive other situations differently. That's one. Mm -hmm. The second, which helps do this, helps build this habit and strengthen it, is to travel. Because when you immerse yourself in another culture, now my wife and I have gone around to more than 40 countries and uh, we've conducted workshops across four continents. And I dare say that that is the reason why I can feel very comfortable with people in different customs and different languages, saying things I completely don't understand, but I still can have a respect for. I still can see that, yes, what they're trying to communicate it does not uh, come to me at a mental level, but it comes to me at an energetic level, at a spirit level. What is what is the intent behind what they're saying? And when you can get that, then all the books of negotiation and all that go out of the window. You don't need that because ultimately people are only doing what they feel is good for them. And if I can do what's good for you, then we both win because I do what I intend to, which is good for you, and you do what you intend to, which is also good for you. So we, we create win-win situations like that purely because we know that uh, that win-win exists because of the way we perceive our responsibility towards the other. Mm -hmm. And we do that more when we're traveling, you know, because we you you interact with porters, you interact with waiters, you interact with receptionists, you interact with business colleagues, you interact with commuters. And everywhere, there's somebody who's going to trouble you. <laughs> yes, yes, but yes, yes. You can exchange your perspective and stop getting troubled. Now I will try to ask my next question, consent with India, because this podcast is also about India. So now we are talking with Sandeep, he's sitting in India. I am Yiji, I'm sitting in the Czech Republic. We are sharing, we are exchanging together. Uh, uh, the question which I prepared is, uh, let's say that somebody who is now listening and likes this interview would like to make business in India. Why mm -hmm. should he or she do it? Why is a good idea to enter Indian market at this moment in the, in the, in the time? Again, from the top of my head, the first thing is that just to build the continuity from what we're saying, India will give you a perspective that nowhere else in the world you're going to get. India has historically been the, it's in the center of the Silk Route. It's been the trading uh, hub historically for like four or 5,000 years. And we, we, we're talking about a population of a billion plus people. So depends on what your business is. If you're looking at a market here, if you're looking at trading with here, if you're looking at sourcing from here, we are, we are, we are a self-reliant uh, manufacturing hub. We make everything that it takes. And uh, we, we're very cost competitive too. So mm -hmm. depending on what business you're in, you could be looking at India from various perspectives as a market, as a source, and uh, liaison and all of that. But you, you start, you travel to India and you get to understand how things can be vastly different from the way you see them in Europe or you see them even in uh, uh, Africa or uh, the Middle East. And when you start understanding how that flows, and that is what we do in the, a travel company that my wife runs, because uh, 
I don't know whether I've mentioned this on this podcast, but she's from Mexico, which is also why we traveled across the world doing our workshops. Mm -hmm. So uh, when she came to India, she had uh, a shock. <laughs> you know, it's very easy to get a culture shock. I can talk more about that on this program if it interests uh, our listeners. But she, she did. And then she met me after some years. And then she realized that she could really enjoy India. And that was uh, the difference, which she said that I want to bring this across to anybody who comes to this country, that you, you understand the F-A-C-T-S, the facts, and you have a great enjoyable experience. So because the perspective is so different, because India has uh, got these things that can really repel uh, you if you don't understand them, uh, it's important to do business with India. It's important to come travel to India and get your get your expand your mind about those things. The second mm -hmm. reason why you want to do business with India, apart from the fact that it's a huge market that you can source and all, which is a subset of the perspective, apart from all that, is because we have uh, tremendous uh, speed in the bureaucracy and government and stability. For the last 10 years, uh, we have uh, had uh, a government which has moved infrastructure, which has moved development, which has moved uh, uh, communication in ways that are way better. And I say that with, with all humility, uh, having traveled, it's way better than stuff that I've seen in Europe. And yes, yes, yes. Go on, please. But it's difficult to believe for us also. We 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 never expected such kind of uh, stabilization of uh, communication infrastructure, such kind of pricing. For example, you know, just getting a SIM card for using in your uh, mobile phone uh, costs some forty euros in uh, in Europe for a month, and it costs uh, four euros in India for a month. So you see the difference. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. tremendous. And if you have uh, a thousand people working in India, that's multiply that by this factor. The cost of communication is like crazy low. Mm -hmm. So uh, stuff like that happens. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I think my video is frozen a bit, but that wouldn't affect our uh, online listeners. I can uh, hear you. I can hear you well. I can hear you well. Perfect. I'm just going to restart the video over here. Sorry about that, guys. And, it's okay. Uh, no problem. Mm -hmm. And to continue answering that uh, question about uh, the second point being stability and development uh, of government and of uh, bureaucracy paperwork, uh, the third reason why you might want to do it is because it is a, a window to all of your expansion in Asia. So coming from Europe, if you get a base here, then your cost of logistics, cost of uh, moving things all over Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Australia, become that much uh, more viable. So you could think about it from that logistical point of view as yeah, well. Yes, so you're actually very well placed. I would like to, to thank that. you for thank you for being here with me because I'm very glad and grateful. Also, thank audience for listening. Uh, Sandeep, of course, I have many questions, but I would like to give you space. Can you ask me any question, please? Your son. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Gigi. What I would uh, like to know is uh, something that you know our audience would also appreciate. Uh, what is it that you think uh, Indians must know about Czechoslovakia? And I would like the audience to add to Iji's answers in the uh, in, in the comments uh, below, uh, so that when Indians see this video uh, or uh, and listen to this podcast, they, they are able to understand the uniqueness of Czechoslovakia beyond Prague, which is we we know Prague. We've seen Prague in Bollywood movies. It's a beautiful destination. We all love to come there, but there is so much of richness in that country that uh, we're not aware of because honestly we're not aware of much more outside of Prague and Czechoslovakia has got so much of history in uh, such a beautiful country. I would like to know a little more about that from you. Yes, yes. 
Yes, thank you for the question. This is definitely for the podcast, 45 minutes podcast with me, and I will gladly make it just about Czech Republic. So it can be uh, then our next talk, but I will briefly sh share my screen very quickly. Just give me one second, please. I will share my screen very quickly now and show the pictures. I prepared here a couple of pictures. So for example, you mentioned Prague. Now you should be able to see my screen. Yes, we do. So here are some pictures from Prague just to show, show you the Prague, but it's not only Prague. It's for example, Plzeň, which is famous for beer. I will change the pictures uh, of the beer. Um, for you, just give me one second, please. I will write here Pilsner beer. And this should give you some pictures about Czech beer like this. So this is typical. Of course, we are surrounded by mountains. So the whole country is surrounded by mountains. So there is skiing for winter. I will stop sharing now. And beautiful nature as well and uh, yeah. it's in the middle of the europe of course so from here i would recommend you to stay in the czech republic and spend here at least two weeks however if you want you can travel to poland germany austria slovakia and other countries even france uh, is near and england is near relatively uh holland so you are in the center of europe so this is the brief answer to your question so I can tell you that uh, since we we do uh, travel, uh, uh, my wife and I, we have uh, the Czech Republic on our uh, list. We've been to Poland, Germany, and France, and around everywhere. But uh, today, with what you told me about uh, the beer, <laughs> which is made there, the Pilsner beer is very popular. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot more Indian tourists coming in because uh, nature. Uh, well, I, I, I think nature is something common to that entire Central European area. But uh, if, if you could point to some specific cities or towns that uh, must be on the itinerary, uh, I think a lot of Indians are going to get excited about that. Yes. For example, Český Krumlov is also famous, Hluboká Castle. I will provide the links under this video upon request. So if any Indian friends write to me under this video, I will always reply with specific questions for the best places and sites. Now let's continue yeah. our talks with Sandeep. Uh, Sandeep Nath uh, is uh, also, uh, I was talking with my mentor yesterday, his name is Thomas, and we were talking about Qigong. And I know about you that you are also a Qigong teacher. Do you practice every day? Absolutely. I, I uh, you know, it is your connection with divine energy. And if you can get that connection as a habit, you will be doing everything else a lot more effectively. So that energy just flows through you and manifests in everything that you do. But if you if you see how that works, um, Qigong, for those of you who don't know, is a, a 4,000 year old practice, uh, which is two words, Qi, which means life force energy, and Gang, which means to work with. So when you work with life force energy, that's the practice of Qigong. And obviously there are various ways to work with it, but all those ways are intended to do the same thing, that is bring your body, your mind, and your energy, your spirit in alignment. So in fact, Qigong is one of the renewal habits also and uh, for self-renewal. And it is also a habit for symbiotic renewal because when you get your energies uh, unify them as a group, as a company, or as a family, or as a team, then using Qigong, you are able to bring a lot better uh, working harmony in, uh, in, in the group. So that's part of symbiotic renewal as well. So when you do anything, you use the body, you use the mind, and you use your energy. You can't do anything without using the body, you can't do anything without using the mind, you can't do anything without using energy. And if you Align these as a habit through a Qigong practice, you do everything better. Thank you. So uh, I would like Sandeep to ask you my final question. What is your takeaway message for this brief message for our audience uh, before we end this interview for today? 
Well, I'm really happy that this uh, podcast is going to come to you sometime in early 2024. And I look forward to that being a fantastic year for you. I look forward to some takeaways from today's conversation being of use to you. Maybe you could start Qigong. Maybe you could write to me about renewal, starting the renewal movement in your local circle, in your company. Uh, maybe you want to just reach out and uh, explore coming to India, expanding your travel horizons. Or you want to invite me if you're in one of those small towns that AG mentioned, I'm going to come oh, over yeah. there. So I'd love to not only come, but also send other people there, have pictures posted, interact through this. So that's the kind of stuff that we could do together in 2024. And we could also, AG, uh, look at organizing uh, masterminds for your business colleagues. We're looking at like minded groups, completely people who don't know each other. Definitely. Let's so, cooperate. Let's make a business yeah, yeah, world yeah. better and uh, visit each other as well. I agree. You are most welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So now Thank at this so. point, I would uh, stop recording usually, but I will leave it a little bit more for behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, from my side, it's, it was very nice meeting you. Uh, nice talk. Thank you for this. Uh, and from my side, I would like to share this with my audience. I have uh, very closed groups because I created a group on the personal basis. People that I know only are inside my groups, communities, they are business owners. So I would like to share this video with them. If you agree, just let me know afterwards. Yes, I will send you the link privately. And if you like it, then we can share it both together. I already like it. Please go ahead. <laughs> Me too. Me too. The important great. thing is why I can say that is because my liking has to do with how my mind thinks about it. But my decision to like it has to do with the energy, the intent with which this was recorded. It is recorded to benefit the business owners. So whether my mind, my ego has any role to play is immaterial. Because the intent is already higher. The energy is already more than the mind and the body. So I want to like it. Please share. Yeah. And the, uh, tell, me you, more, uh, tell, <laughs> tell me if, Sandeep, if you have one more minute, tell me how uh, can we uh, live without stress? With one uh, sentence. <laughs> so, uh, great question. Again, segues directly from what I'm saying. If we can align body, mind, and spirit, there is no friction, there is no stress. Now, what does that mean? Because the body, we understand, we can see it, uh, we use it. The mind, we little bit understand, it's got its mood swings, we don't really know why we're happy, why we're sad, what happens, but we, we do acknowledge that there are emotions there, the mind is there, the ego is there, all that stuff. The spirit, we understand the least. In fact, most people must be wondering, what is the spirit, what is this energy he's talking about? But we have all experienced it. We've all experienced this feeling of uh, knowing somebody or liking somebody or feeling something about somebody even before we have met them. There is an anticipation. We always had this uh, experience where two things, where two people say the same thing at the same time because they have been already thinking, they're already connected energetically. The phone rings and you know whose phone it is. That is an energetic transmission that we have not been able to measure scientifically. So because we can't measure it, we don't acknowledge it, but we experience it and we can acknowledge it. How we experience this is how we feel. That is the basis of our being. We are human beings. So how we be is the first in, uh, impulse that comes up, the instinct, the intuition. How we say is the mind. Some things we filter. We don't say everything that comes to our mind. Or sometimes we say what comes to our mind and then we regret it because that was the thought that manifested through the mind. And what we do is the body. We do things with our body. So if we can track the say, the do, and the be, because all these three are very tangible. Unlike the body, mind, spirit, say we know what we're saying, do we know what we're doing, be we know what we're feeling. If we can track what the say do be and bring the say do be in harmony, we will be without stress. If I say 
that I am going to do a podcast recording with you and then I don't do it. Either you or I or both of us will be stressed. If I say and do it, but I'm not here, I'm not looking into the camera, I'm not thinking about the audience, I'm not being with you, I don't feel like doing it. You know, it happens in our workplace a lot of times. We are saying it, we're doing it, but our, our being is in the golf course or our being is you know, with our wife or with the, our kids or somewhere else. We are stressed. We wonder, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I saying what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so unless there is an alignment there, there is stress. And you can find it out with a self-diagnostic <laughs> if you say to be in harmony. And I would like to support you here, Sandeep, by saying action point for our listeners. Please do it. Go to the inner power with Sandeep.com. And uh, if you like what Sandeep is doing, I like it. I will do it myself after this video. And again, thank you so much for being here with me today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for this lovely, candid conversation. It just flowed so freely. And I hope uh, you listeners have got something out of it.